So recycling and reusing, all right? So one of the key things to get around recycling and reusing to make sure that we're doing it properly, like the first thing is plan ahead. So that's the best thing. A lot of food waste is because of lack of planning. Um, only buy what you need, store it correctly, cook the right amount and cook it correctly. Eat all the store, all the store leftovers for uh, later. So what's left over can be utilized as well. Um, and recycle what you can't eat. So uh, recycle could be you're adding it to a different type of dish and you're making some new garnish with something and you're incorporating it into maybe just, it could be as simple as a pot of soup, but you're not throwing it out. That's really what I'm talking about here. Um, because again, for me personally, that is the biggest issue facing us in the short term is actually food waste. All right, so the climate is an issue, absolutely. Um, but food waste right here and right now is one of our biggest issues. Um, so restaurants, especially larger ones and commercial kitchens, generate major amounts of food waste, like we've said. Um, commercial waste disposal can assist with proper sorting and discarding of this and all other types of commercial waste. So we need to be able to think about that in our kitchens when we're creating with our food. And not just our food as well, by the way. The packaging our food comes in. All right, that's really important to understand that. Why do we need plastic, 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 plastic wrapped around and everything? All right, um, our suppliers, get to know our suppliers and what are their philosophy in all this as well. So that's important. Um, <clears throat> so literally thousands of tons of food waste are produced in the restaurant industry each year. And the restaurant and hotel industry, and this is based on the Environmental Protection Agency studies here in Ireland. Um, but it can be said if it's here, it's in most other um, developed countries as well, is that 49% of all food waste is generated in hotels and restaurants. Right, 49%. So basically half of all food waste is generated in hotels and restaurants. Now, it can't all be that the consumers are not eating all the food in their plate. All right. Um, so what we're doing inside in kitchens, what we're doing inside in our preparation, um, have we thought about what can we use the skins of anything for anything? All right. Um, when we're topping and tailing, are we topping and tailing properly or are we topping and tailing and having an, an more enormous amount of waste with that? OK, so again, this is about our skill set, using that properly, ensuring that we're using it properly and really becoming sort of intelligent chefs with knowledge about what we're doing, not just the skills to create a dish not just being delighted because we're frying the steak and we're putting a flame on the pan and it look good, looks good, all right? They're nice things to do, but they're tricks. And uh, that's really not what chefing is, is about. That's the circus around chefing, if we put it that way, all right? Chefing and cooking and being professional at our jobs is about knowledge and how we utilize and how we work with food and how we create food and create dishes and understanding our surroundings and where our food comes from and how it's grown. Um, culinary knowledge is about getting to know our farmers and our food producers, getting to know our suppliers, building relationships with them, getting to know our customers and our locality. Now that's professional chefing. You know, all that stuff is professional chefing. And it really is a hard one for particularly young chefs to get their head around, but it will come to you, is that yes, we must learn the skills of cooking. That's what, you know, allows us to be employed and stuff like that. Um, but they're just the skills, all right? The ability to cook is all it is, the ability to cook. Uh, being a really good professional chef is the knowledge that you have in your head and understanding where and how you can use it combination of that knowledge together to create really, really good food, guys. I know myself personally is that I just love simplistic food. And I don't mean like one, I'd like five, six ingredients done really well in season. Absolutely. I don't think there's any better food out there than that. And for me, that's what sustainability also means. All right, because I'm not taking too much. I'm taking all that I want to eat. I'm, you know, I'm going to have a banana during the week. I don't mind doing that um, because we live in a contemporary world. We're not going back to a time when we couldn't get bananas. 
in Ireland. I mean, you know, that's not going to happen. In fact, I'm old enough to remember when the first box of Kiwis came to my village where I grew up in. All right, in 1983, uh, the first box of Kiwis came in. All right, and the whole village came down to taste what a Kiwi was. So, Argo, you have your hand up. Thank you. I, I'd like to say that I totally agree. I will bring an example. One time when I was working at the restaurant, a waiter, she uh, had grown her own tomatoes and cucumbers. And she asked me to make a salad with those. And so I made just tomatoes and cucumbers and very little salt and pepper. And it was extremely good. I, very simple, but it was very good salad. And that's a great example, Argo, is that that's what I'm talking about, is that, you know, we can make simplicity taste really, really well. And that's what it means to be a really good chef. So you had two ingredients plus salt and pepper. Uh, I don't know, did you use an oil or a dressing or maybe a little bit of vinegar? So really simple ingredients. But it's the fact that the cucumber and the tomato were in season, homegrown. So the flavor was there already. All you did was you enhanced it and you put your professional stamp on it uh, to make it that little bit better. Um, that is the key to it. So when you're doing your dishes for your competition, and your uh, pop-up restaurants, um, it's really important to consider those options, you know? And again, I was a young chef once too. So, you know, I, 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 I understand the excitement of being inside, involved in the food world. And we see all these television programs, and you see this beautiful dishes being created and, you know, real big highs and stacked on top of each other and all these exotic flavors and uh, ingredients and stuff like that. And I've worked in that industry. You know, I've been lucky enough to work in Michelin star restaurants in Europe in my time. And it was, it was really exciting and I loved it. And it's made me a better chef. There's no doubt about that. Um, but what I have learned while I was learning all that as well is actually, you know, simplicity works if it's, if the food itself is correct. There's no need to mess around with it so much. There's no need to, um, again, try to cover up because of lack of taste and flavor. And Argo's example is excellent. That's two ingredients, you know, but in season. And what a beautiful salad, by the way. Cucumber and tomato, beautiful salad, you know, if they're done right. But I know for myself, tomatoes, again, local supermarkets here have tomatoes available everywhere, um, but they taste of nothing. You know, I didn't taste a real tomato, my first real tomato, until I went traveling around Europe. I never knew what a tomato actually really tasted like until I went to the places where they grow tomatoes and they grow them properly and they take them when they're in season. My God, then I tasted the tomato. All right. So, um, and all of this does combine for, you know, a sustainable existence, you know, incorporating all these things. Um, because we forget sustainability starts with ourselves, the individual. That's where it starts. It doesn't start with government. It doesn't start with this country does it, so this country should do it. This country is better than this country, uh, whatever it may be, or this region is better than this region. It starts with ourselves, what we do. All right. So, Argo, that's a great case in point, is that uh, uh, someone you know came in with cucumbers and tomatoes. So that's where it starts, and you were able to do something with that. So that's two individuals that started a sustainable dish there, all right, and created a sustainable dish. Um, some pit you were talking about sort of walking in the forest and the things that are edible inside there yes, you know, yes. again that's sustainable that's sustainability a fantastic sustainability and even if it's just you and one other person you introduce one other person you've done your job all right because now somebody else understands um what we mean by sustainability um the problem with this whole subject area is there's an awful lot of people dictating to other people what they should be doing when the reality is is that a lot of us are actually probably doing an awful lot of this already sometimes subconsciously um, so all we're trying to do is bring that mindset into our professional lives and our professional careers so that we can spread this message out there 
Um, and I mean spread it without being dictatorial, all right, or without ramming it down somebody's throat saying that you have to do this and you have to do that. Um, again, I'm here in Ireland. Dairy has always been part of my diet. To this day, I drink at least one litre of milk a day. Some days it's two litres. It's my favourite drink of all drinks is milk. So at least one litre a day. Some days it's two litres of milk is what I drink. And full fat, I butter on everything. I like cream. I like buttermilk. Um, I like cheese. God, Ireland does amazing cheeses. We actually produce more cheese than France does, more varieties of cheese than France does. Um, and France is famous for its cheese. In Ireland, we just different style, but more cheeses. Um, but apparently, I'm now hurting the planet because of my diet. And what's happening there is that people are becoming... Uh, more dictatorial about it is that you should follow this diet to help the planet. Well, also, I have a culture. All right. And my culture is important to me as well. And food is part of culture. It's integral to your culture is your food culture. So what do I do when it comes to milk? Well, I buy my milk from a local milk supplier. Um, here, luckily enough, around Chile, where I'm based, is you have the large uh, suppliers of milk. Um, a brand called Lee Strand is one that I buy, or Dawn Dairies. But actually, in recent years, a local brand, only six kilometers out the road. Um, I've been to the farm. I know the man quite well. Um, Ballymac Milk. So he started doing his own milk um, after he milks his cattle. So now I'm using that milk. All right. So that's sustainable. That's what we mean by sustainability as well. Not giving up dairy. All right. But actually bringing it back to a local component. Um, and also there, when we talk about healthier options, we, we have to take into consideration food culture. So uh, the average lifespan for a male in Ireland is nearly 80 years old. So it's increased, you know, decade upon decade. It's fantastic. So on average, I live to be 80 years old. That's brilliant. So it's a longer life than my grandfather's parents had uh, because the average age was less back then. And we've always had dairy as our diet. So... Is it really that much of an unhealthy diet? I don't think so. All right. It's just a different diet. Um, can we make things healthier? Possibly. Absolutely. Of course we can. Um, but we can't discount things and we can't discount cultures and we can't discount what people eat. And to be really sustainable, that's what we mean. Because the individual unique culture needs to be sustained also. We cannot become a homogenized world. All right, that's not going to work. Um, and it never has worked. In, all through history, that's never worked. Uh, but what we can do is be conscious of the things that we're eating and thinking about it a little bit more. So that's sort of really, when we talk about sustainable gastronomy, there's no right or wrong answer in it. There's no, you do this and it's more sustainable. You do that and it's more sustainable. It's sort of more a philosophy and an ethic that we bring to the table, pardon the pun, and that we bring to the table when we do our job. And that really is what we mean by sustainability. And that's what should be promoted by sustainability in that sense. All right. And certainly not the um, diktats that we're hearing. Uh, Marcus. Yeah, can I just add one thing? Uh, when you're uh, talking about the, the global like uh, warming and all that, uh, and you're we're talking about your parents and you're talking about uh, milk and that, I was just thinking like uh, the dairy products that uh, animals like uh, eat uh, grass. The grass is also changing because we are polluting like uh, the planet and the planet affects the rain and the uh, cows eat uh, grass when it uh, rains and that uh, affects the final product, uh, the milk and uh, that etc, etc, etc. Isn't that like uh, causing the milk to be less uh, un, uh, like less uh, healthier than your parents drink? Um, potentially, Marcus, you are correct. But I suppose in Ireland, we're lucky in the sense that um, we have sustainable farming system, particularly for dairy. You know what I mean? That it's not intensive feeding and stuff like that, which does affect the product. Now, there's no doubt that rearing of animals has an effect 
on the planet simply because of the population that we have on the planet, the growing population. There's no doubt about that. The science tells us that. So I certainly wouldn't be going against science on that one. Um, but it also depends on how we produce our product and the methods that we employ in producing our product. Um, it will have an effect on sustainability, and you're absolutely correct. In some regions where it's really intensive farming, um, I'm not going to name the countries because I don't like naming countries like that because, you know, it, it's like it's a competition or whatever. But we know certain countries where the cattle and our um, grass fades and they're not left out into the wild. They're intensive feeding. Um, the meat itself, I don't think, tastes as nice. I don't think the products that come from the meat, the secondary products, as you said, Marcus, taste as nice. Um, certainly not. Um, but what we must try to do is that understand that we're not going to stop eating meat or we're not going to stop this tomorrow morning. What we can all do is to play our little part in creating a sort of systems out there step by step, you know, literally step by step where we become more aware of all these things and maybe try to do it better, Marcus, if that of makes course. sense. Of course. So, um, you know, I agree with you absolutely in what you're saying. Um, but I just think right now at the moment um, is that the whole um, climate change and sustainability and everything is being kind of rammed down people's throats and people are going like, oh, hold on a second. You know, we, we, we've been doing this for a long time. Can we do it better? Absolutely. You know, and I agree with you on that. And that's about us as individuals doing it step by step, one bit better. If everybody does one thing better, it's going to be better tomorrow. Uh, does that, you know, make sense to you, Marcus? Yeah, of course. Uh, I was just trying to add to your uh, conversation. No, absolutely. And you're, yeah, you're yeah. absolutely dead right. Um, I'm very much against intensive farming for the wrong reasons. You know, I, I just think that like that is the wrong way to go about things. Of because course, I, yes sir of course i agree with you because uh, in estonia it's also like noticeable like uh, when we're using like uh, for example the carrots and i was making uh, like local carrot uh, stock it was like three times better from the like uh, stems and that than the like uh, carrot that's like uh, been like uh, uh, been with the products and uh, been like uh, antiseptides and all that and uh, with that, it's like noticeable already if you're uh, like, uh, for example, uh, I'm not if uh, I'm not sure if you got the uh, comparison. Yeah, no, no, no. Carrot is actually a great comparison. And it really is. And like for a lot of times, and this is where education comes into play, is a lot of times is that people don't know what a carrot really tastes like until yeah, they exactly. taste a homegrown carrot. Yeah. you know are a locally sourced carrot um we have a vegetable company here they uh, out on the coast in north kerry and uh, because the soil is sandy and they do it kind of naturally it's really amazing flavor from the carrots like very different from say the east coast where there's more intensive farming going on so i absolutely i get you 100 percent, and it's about introducing that you know it's brilliant to hear you int introducing that into restaurants and places that you've worked and dishes that you've worked on because people then don't need so many more ingredients because they're enjoying the simplistic ingredients for what they are. And we can still create th those really, really well, by the way. We can yeah. present them well, we can get flavor, we can do really good dishes with all that stuff. So yeah, you know, that's a really good yeah. example, actually. Because in uh, it's just one example, I'm sure like uh, a lot of other restaurants are trying to use this, but uh, since Estonia is like really uh, islandly, like there's a lot of islands, there's like one uh, restaurant that's on island and it's using like products like Favik and like uh, it's trying to use only the products that you get from around the island. You're not getting shipped uh, like mousse uh, from somewhere because you're not getting uh, mousse fresh and that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that, this is where I would then be on board with all this. So it goes back to what we're talking about, sort of locality, seasonality, provenance of food, um, you know, really good ingredients in season with, you know, we don't have to have 20 ingredients on the plate, yes. um, you know, four or five ingredients in season from the locality. Well, we can create so much good food with that. 
we really can, you know, and we can diversify it. All right. So we can create several dishes from one item. So maybe the item is the, the thing that we concentrate on the month. So maybe it is the carrots. So maybe it's the month where, you know, we're trying to incorporate more carrot into different dishes we're creating and soups and maybe sauces or something like that, you know. And then it goes back then to preserving those over the winter. So going back to learning how to preserve again. All right. And that's what makes it really sustainable, you know. So, so well done. Really good commentary. All right. Good commentary. Um, did somebody else have their hand up there for... Yes, I was uh, earlier hand up and okay, so some pitch, yeah. Yes, um, I you was mentioned about uh, you was living island and you have been taste chili where you are order eight and it. My question, I wondering that when you taste some different kind of food, did you feel that oh, it is sparkling, is tasty and immediately feeling, or how long you? you will get into the new variety of food, new culture. Then you will feel, okay, this is the taste and I enjoy this way, this flavor and, and all those things. Okay, that's a really good question, by the way, because everyone's initial reaction to when it comes to new food because, yes, is, uh, because, is cautious. Yes, because if uh, myself, if I have to uh, introduce um, new food to the new culture, I afraid that it takes some time to to be introduce introduce all those new things to them. Uh, first, uh, do they gonna like it? The second, do they like the taste? And third, coming so on, are they wanna taste it? Even uh, it's a simple taste, even the simple thing what we was uh, talking and discuss about. But for some reason, some new culture. I afraid it's a challenge for us as well to to introduce the new thing. How can we open up their mind? Uh, I think about myself. I was uh, live in Thailand as a Thai culture. We eat rice every day, three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And when I moved to the Western culture, we eat bread. I feel that the bread. I eat the whole loaf of bread. I don't feel enough. I I still want to eat. I feel hungry. It's not enough for me. This this kind of thing that uh, how how we can get into the real reality. This is the food, and how can we make? It's a challenge to me. I feel that it's a huge challenge to introduce yes. the new thing to the new culture. Okay, you, you're not incorrect in that. It is challenging. Challenging. All right. So it is challenging, and yeah. that's because our cultures are so diverse and so varied. So um, in sort of U European culture in particular, bread would be quite strong, you're correct. Um, me, myself personally, I'm not really gone with white bread um, because I grew up with brown wholemeal bread, you know? So I prefer brown wholemeal bread. So that's even from an individual that comes from a European culture, is that yes, bread I enjoy, but I prefer brown wholemeal bread. Um, and it really is my favorite type of bread to eat. So even white bread wouldn't satisfy me in that sense. And um, rice is something I didn't taste until I was at least. Now, I, again, people don't realize Ireland's a very modern country today. Um, but when I was growing up, Ireland was barely a developed country. You know what I mean? Ireland didn't get rich until the late 90s. You know, before that, high unemployment, a lot of immigration. Um, very, very backward, very conservative country. And that was emanated in our food as well, where it was very, very conservative. I didn't taste rice until I was 17. So I, I never knew what, I never tasted pasta until I was 17. So literally when I moved out of Ireland in that time, now this is back in the 1980s, the late 80s. So very, very different times as well, okay? And different generation. But step by step, you can introduce these things. Uh, I think sometimes when we come in, we, we try to bring everything with us. And maybe as sort of chefs working in restaurants when we have a new idea, it's always good to introduce it just in one item first and test that item in the restaurant. You know, it could be a specials dish or it could be uh, an addition or a side dish that you can serve for something. And that way then you get people used to eating different flavors. 
Um, but it really is sort of cultural differences as well. So um, a lot of the students that I've had, and I have students all this afternoon, and we, we're actually talking about food culture this afternoon. And uh, one of the things that you'll find uh, with regard to food culture is that food culture, again, it's part of sustainability. That's why I mention it so much. It's a forgotten part of sustainability is food culture sometimes. It's all about sort of sustainability of the environment. And if you get sustainability of culture, helps with sustainability of the environment. And it's actually, the evidence shows that as well, that the two work hand in hand together to help to sustain a, a, the overall environment. Um, but what you'll find there is that if you do it slowly, and bit by bit and new ingredient by new ingredient, well then actually people get used to it a lot more. You know, so the first time I tasted chili, I thought my mouth was going to explode. All right, I really did. Now I loved, I'd have chili on my breakfast if I could. I absolutely adore chili. You know, I really love chili in my food. But the first time, and it took me a long time to get used to what chili was and the different types of chilies and how, and how you use it. Like, that's the thing, how you use chili. And that's a really good example, the chili one, because in Ireland, culturally, you know, and we still have it today, like 50% of the population wouldn't eat chili because it's not in our culture at all at all. Um, but then I know lots of people who, if you think of this culturally, we think of different things that we eat and uh, the locality. Like I said, Ireland is very much dairy as part of our culture. I know some cultures, if they had to, if they ate the amount of dairy that we eat, they'd God, it would turn their stomach. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, really? You drink that much milk? You eat that much butter? You have that much cheese? You know? So, and again, it's it's uh, be you know, it, it, it's dairy in the sense of cow dairy in, in that sense. So, again, very different from goat's cheeses or sheep's cheeses and stuff like that, which are a little bit lighter. And um, so everything is about introducing slowly. And then when we introduce slowly, we can build up. All right, and we can build up a sort of a, a new taste culture. And one of the beauties about food is that we can infuse different things together. All right, so we can have Finnish thought Thai cuisine. <laughs> we can combine the two things together. Or we can have Irish Basque cuisine. We can combine the two things together. Or we can have a combination of all four countries. So Estonia, Finland... Basque country in Ireland, and we can create a dish from ingredients from all of those. Now, people say, oh, you're going against the whole locality thing. Not really, because if the philosophy is about sort of preserving cultures as well as part of sustainability, well, then again, that helps the local people because they're growing the vegetables that we can then use. And we're also in, uh, mixing cultures, which is really, really important. Um, so, you know, it's uh, sorry, Marcus. Yes, you have your hand up. Yeah, I would just quickly add one thing. I love the thing about you, uh, like uh, making foods together, like uh, making Estonian and Scottish or uh, Finland, Estonian. Uh, there's actually a chef uh, in Copenhagen that talked about uh, making, uh, like uh, he traveled a lot like you, and he was trying to make those dishes. Like, uh, for example, he was in Thailand. He was trying to take like Thailand ingredients and make it in Copenhagen. But that didn't work, so he tried to make the uh, Thai food with the, the local ingredients to make a different uh, kind of food, and that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, try yeah. to take everything local. Yeah, I yeah, love that idea. I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that really is the fundamentals. I mean, I make an Irish stew now, and I incorporate chili into it. So, like, it's still an Irish stew, but we're just added some heat and some chili into it. Um, it's still a lovely dish. I love it all the time, you know, but it's just a little bit, so we can do it that way as well. It's that sort of infusion of cultures, infusion of tastes and flavors. Um, uh, keeping the local product and just developing it, you know, adding something to it. And again, this all helps with sustainability. And like I said, is to move away from this idea that we have to all become vegetarians or vegans, or go plant-based solely, um, that we need to save the planet. Absolutely, we have to be conscious of the planet. There's no doubt about that, because like I said in the beginning, there is no planet B, and there will not be a planet B. You know, Star Trek is a TV show. We're not going to be going off 
wandering the galaxy anytime soon. And when I say anytime soon, in the next 50,000 years, it's not going to happen. Science tells us that. And we're not even close to that. Um, so we have the one planet. There's no doubt about that. Um, but there are things that we can do starting with ourselves that can enhance the overall enjoyment of everything to do with that planet. Like, I'm a big fan of traveling the world and new experiences, but I am contributing to climate change when I do that. So what do we do? Do we stop traveling? Do we stop going around the place? Do we stop um, seeing new cultures? You know, do we just stick within our own little circle and never move out of it again? And again, that's not the world we live in. But what we can do is that we can be conscious of it and try and incorporate it in. And I think that's the whole key thing to sustainability. So like just before we finish, that's why the worksheets, when you see the worksheets, that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to make you think. All right. So and again, it's very, very hard for young people sometimes um, to think about thinking. All right. And I know that seems a really odd thing to say, but it, it's so true. And I was young one time, too. So I didn't think very well either and, 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 until I learned how to think properly. And what we mean by thinking properly, it's thinking in everything that we're doing. You know, what is this purpose? Why am I doing this? If I do this, is it working? And particularly as chefs, you know, it is like, you know, what helps to make what I'm trying to produce that bit better? And in 2021, incorporating what we have in our local area into what we're trying to do and create in our restaurants is actually one of the things that can make it better. All right, and make it absolutely better. There's no doubt about that. Um, and again, more and more people want this. So it's also a trend that's out there. And, and I think it's a bit more than sort of a, just a fashion because I think it's here to stay. So it's definitely trending towards that. There's no doubt about it. Um, but don't discount what we already have um, in our cultures as well, uh, which is a real important part of sustainability. And uh, once we combine those two things together, yeah, then we can look after Mother Earth a bit better. There's no doubt about that. Um, because Mother Earth looks after us. There's no doubt about that either. All right. So, um, but like already with some of the commentary that I had there, you, you're on the same page. You know, we're all on the same page here. People are conscious of it. So it's great. And I'm delighted. And I look forward to looking at your menu creations and your dish creations and the pop up and, you know, all the stuff up on the, the, website as well guys there's loads more stuff up there there really is and i'd love you to um you know play around with that i mean i, I think the whole idea of a 360 photo and the way the website has been designed is really really helpful and it's interactive for you and it's something that you can dip in and dip out of but also share it amongst your friends because sometimes when we talk about it is that people kind of switch off or they look around the room and look at something else because we're always talking about it, all right? But if you give them something to interact with, um, that may help as well. So a little bit of education there as well, not just for ourselves, but for our wider, wider group of friends. That will also help. So what I'm going to put up here now, guys, is I'm just putting up my email address for work, all right? So that's it there. Uh, please feel free to send me an email if you want any more information or you have any queries or any commentary or you know you want to inquire about something absolutely and i will respond to you it might not be instantaneously but i will respond to you and there's no doubt about that um, i hope you have um enjoyed today all right um again it's not sort of one of those subject areas where it's black and white um, so for that reason, sometimes it can be difficult to get our heads around everything that's been spoken about. Um, but again, if you just reflect later on the, this afternoon or this evening, whenever you get a chance, if you go for a walk or something like that, and just think about what we're saying. All right. So uh, we're here to help the world. All right. And we can help the world by changing ourselves and changing one little habit that we may have. And that's the best way that we can help the world. And certainly. By being conscious of that, we will end up having 
better careers and being better cooks and chefs. There is no doubt about that. You know, better careers and better cooks and chefs. And the one thing I would say to all the young people out there um, and the older people out there as well, um, you know, travel, travel, experience things, all right, experience food. Um, I had tarantula two years ago for the first time. I've eaten snail's eggs, you know, the deep fried crickets, loved it, all right? That's the best. Egg, kangaroo. Um, I had smoked crocodile in South Africa when I was there. You know, just so many wonderful experiences. And people say, oh, that's, I couldn't eat that, I couldn't eat that, all right? But, and I'll end on this, it's no different from eating fried blood because we eat that here in Ireland for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and we call it black pudding. But it's no different from eating because it's fried blood, fundamentally, all right? So every culture has something to offer, and every local region has something to offer us um, to eat and to use. And it's how we use that and how we incorporate that into what we do, which makes us uh, all have a better sustainable future. So I'd like to thank you for attending. Um, I hope it was useful to you. All right. And uh, thank you, Yana. Um, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I hope it was useful to you, but not so much in the short term. I hope it will be useful to you in the long term. And that's really where this is important. It's your long term thinking is the most important thing. And if I can achieve that with just one of you and one individual thinks about that into the future, well, then I've done my job as well, all right? Because there's one more person that's thinking along the right lines, all right? So um, enjoy the rest of your program, all right? That's really important. Um, very exciting modules coming up as well. And I know you've done some really exciting modules already. Um, I hope that you get something really good out of it and uh, keep in touch. And I'd like that. I mean, that, that's the whole idea is build a network as well around you and and uh, that's a good thing because we can share information then. so that's a really good thing so i'll bid you all um adieu uh, which is french or sloan um sloan august banach that's how we say it here in ireland so sloan august banach um goodbye and stay safe all right and um yeah it's my pleasure unless anyone has any other questions now we can finish up if everybody's happy with that Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your inputs. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Bye bye. No, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mary. You. All right. Thank you, folks. Marcus. Marcus. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.